Hello, snow campers. There is a lot of clothing that goes into a comfortable trip, so let's get to it. Let's start with a great hiking action shot. I mean, this dude looks cool. The background looks cool. I could see this picture in a magazine. So if this is an example of what is right, what could wrong look like? I'll tell you, it's hot with all this stuff on it. Layering clothing is about sweat management. Minimize sweat and maximize warmth or cooling by adding or shedding layers. If you sweat, you get wet, then cold. So let's prevent this. Snow camping has times of intense physical activity like hiking and building snow structures. Then there are long periods with little activity in the evening sitting in the snow kitchen when the temps have dropped. I will run through how I layer clothing to stay warm and most importantly control sweat while snow camping. The first layer is the base layer. It is directly against my skin and wicks sweat away from the skin. My preferences are for wool, wool blends, and silk against my skin. The mid layer is over the base layer and wicks sweat away from the base layer. It is looser fitting than the base layer. This layer often has a quarter zipper to allow torso ventilation during high physical exertion and may need to be removed to control sweat. I use synthetic materials for this layer. Next is the insulating layer. This layer adds bulk and warmth. I definitely take these off during any physical exertion. I include beanies, neck gaiters, and gloves in this category because they are the first to go if I engage in any physical activity when I am up to three layers. These are examples of interchangeable layers. I have used fleece, but it is bulky to pack. I changed my upper to a 600 fill down puffy. Depending on weather forecasts, I may use the fleece pants or I up insulate to the USGI third generation ECWCS level seven Prima Loft pants. They are like wearing a sleeping bag on my legs and are very, very heavy duty and reasonably priced on eBay. Last and certainly not least is the waterproof outer layer to protect the previous layers from a wet environment and wind. A final quick look at the inner layers and now more on outer layers. An uninsulated or insulated waterproof outer layer completes the clothing layering system. Many snow campers add these additional layers due to the hours of inactivity while socializing in the snow kitchen at night. Common add-ons are down pants, down booties, and balaclavas. I prefer a separate neck gaiter and beanie to a balaclava. I do not use the down pants and booties. I use the ECWCS pants, and I mention these additional items because many people wear extra heavy layers at night in the snow kitchen. I start my hikes cold. I let the hike warm me up. I only wear one layer to quickly dissipate heat and control sweat while getting to camp. I wear one layer with easy to remove lightweight gaiters on my head, neck, and arms. The head gaiter fits under my sun hat. I can put them on or take them off while hiking without removing my backpack and stuff them into a pocket. If hiking in a snowstorm, the sun hat is stowed and my waterproof shell covers all the gaiters or bare skin. The puffy is for trail stops while hiking. This is all I wear while hiking. Experience has shown me that I get very hot and sweat. You may choose to add more layering. After a short rest from the hike, shelter construction begins. Much like hiking, shelter construction requires a lot of physical exertion and controlling sweat is a top priority. The second moisture control comes from protecting oneself from physical contact with the snow. Snow can enter around the neck and waist. Pant legs should be a non-issue because of boot gaiters. I stay pretty warm while shelter building. I control sweat by wearing uninsulated waterproof shells and a hat to keep the snow from falling around my neck. I protect my main points of contact with the snow, hands and knees, with long cuffed blue chemical gloves for digging and my knees with lightweight foam knee pads. All my lightweight gaiters are in a pocket if needed. 
all these items can be replaced with dry clothing later in the day. All good campsites need a kitchen to cook, eat, and socialize. Kitchen construction begins immediately after shelters are built. Kitchen construction generally is more exposed when compared to individual shelter construction. I often add a lightweight puffy during kitchen construction. I will wear these items until the kitchen is complete around 4 p.m. By 4.30 p.m., I will put on all my nighttime layers for my legs so I only have to take off my boots and gaiters one time. Temps are dropping and physical activity consists of bringing stoves and food to the kitchen. I wear long john bottoms, mid-layer and insulating layer pants, and swap uninsulated waterproof pants for insulated pants. I will still wear the lightweight puffy and uninsulated shell jacket. My beanie, wool glove liners, and heavy-duty neck gaiter are in a pocket. By 5.30 p.m., physical activity has been over for a while and temps continue to drop. I will add my long john top and mid-layer to my torso underneath the lightweight puffy. The lightweight head and neck gaiters are swapped for a beanie and heavy neck gaiter. Cooking is still well underway, so I continue to wear the blue chemical gloves with my light wool liners stowed in a pocket. Around 5.30, I am still wearing my uninsulated outer shell, and sometime before 6.30, I swap out the uninsulated shell for my insulated down parka. Dinner might be over, but snow is still being melted for water, so I will have ski gloves with me, but most likely I'm wearing the long cuffed chemical gloves until I am done with any hot water. Sleeping is where what I do and what you may want to do could greatly differ. I run hot, and since I carry all of these layers to stay warm sitting in the kitchen for hours, I utilize many of these layers for sleeping. I have my base layer, and I change into dry socks at bedtime. I wear my mid layer, and I have tried wearing my full insulation layer. And after an hour in my bag, I generally get too hot in the USGI pants, so I mostly use them for cold spots or as a draft stop. They can also make an extra thick foot box. At bedtime, I add a second beanie that I can roll down to cover my eyes and overlap my neck gaiter so that no skin is exposed on my face or neck. I sleep with my head outside my sleeping bag to keep moisture from condensing inside the bag. Any waterproof hiking boot will do. Examples are Oboe's Be Dry, Merrill, Loa, Solomon, Timberland, and Keen are all good brands. If there's enough room, swap out the insole for a warmer insole for the snow. I have worn Loa's for many trips. When it comes to snow boots, Sorel and Columbia are the most popular snow boots amongst snow camping leaders. I have worn Sorel and now I wear Columbia because they seem to be more durable when using snowshoes. Boots and foot care are so important that I will cover this topic specifically in a separate video. Stay tuned. The final outer layer you will wear are snow gaiters. They are a must for keeping snow out of your boots and keeping socks and boots dry. I prefer over the calf gaiters to shorter gaiters because they seem to work the best and stay in place without sliding down. Some snow pants have built-in gaiters. I tend to overheat in those pants while hiking. I recommend wearing your gaiters until you turn in for the night. To be clear, you'll wear them while hiking, shelter, and kitchen construction, and after dark for going off trail to the bathroom until you are in your shelter for the night. Although many compacted trails will form within a few hours of making camp, if you post hole without gaiters, the snow will get into your boots. If you found any of this info helpful, please like the video and find product links in the description.